I'm Adrian Erickson, Sasquatch, also known as Bigfoot. You might not have given it much thought, but how would you react if you saw one with your own eyes? I know for a fact, I've been doing this for a long time, and I know that there has been, has been, and there is not right now any other studies like this that have come close to this level of productivity. We filmed and recorded them on many different occasions. Definitely we had some really great opportunities to collect uh, quite compelling evidence. A small minority of scientists, we treat it as a, a de facto discovery. A discovery that has been made in fact, but has not yet been acknowledged. Well, the, the, the entire problem is the strange phenomenon that scientists won't study it. A track is a signature of a living species. Short of recognizing a new species of animal, we've recognized these as a distinct type of footprint. DNA is a form of evidence that really can't be a hoax. If we got just to the point where we had a good DNA sample that we could sequence and through that confirm that there is an unrecognized species, that would be uh, a huge step forward. With additional collaborative, undisputable DNA evidence, the final result will be released. People are unaware of the evidence. Now they'll become aware of it. Will that change things? You will witness never-before-seen evidence as you follow Adrian Erickson on his epic journey to fulfill his quest. I've often been asked, as a hunter, why there is no body or bones of a Sasquatch. The answer is quite simple. Show me anyone who's found the bones of a black bear, a mountain lion, or a wolf that has died of natural causes. Well, biologists have a very hard time uh, putting a number on, say, the number of grizzly bears in North America, an animal that's hard to census. With Sasquatches, it's even more the case. What I would say, based on reports I hear, reports that make it to me, is that however many there are, there's more than we think. And I know that's not very helpful. It, I would say that it's in the thousands rather than the hundreds. I'd go that far. Uh, I come up with a number that's, you know, that, that's probably more conservative than has been suggested in the past. Uh, and as we've talked about it, it's, I think it's somewhere uh, between, if, if we're talking just about the western United States, Intermountain West, Rocky Mountains westward in Canada, I'd say maybe 500 to 800 individuals. Uh, if we take in the entire North America, considering the boreal forests of Canada and down Appalachia and the southeast, then, uh, then we probably have to bump that up, at least double that or triple that. So at the most, we're talking 2,000 to 3,000 individuals across the entire continent, I would think. I have no way of quantifying numbers of Sasquatch, but based on my research and on the research of others, we know there are viable breeding populations scattered throughout almost all the forested areas of North America. When you combine that with the vast coastal areas of British Columbia and southeastern Alaska that are largely uninhabited, and then combine that with southeastern United States, Appalachia, where we're getting evidence that they're just more and more there all the time, there has to be 4,000 Sasquatch, and there may be two to three times that number. I think a lot of scientists are hesitant to consider this because the idea of a hoax looms so large in their minds. I mean, hoaxes have occurred in science, like the Piltdown hoax. And it's embarrassing. Scientists don't want to make mistakes. And so often it's easier for them to steer clear of a subject that they think is pretty risky.